Hey, hey, welcome to Caspio Live. It's Ned. Welcome to yet another episode of Building Applications with Caspio. If you're able to hear me okay, please let me know in the chat window so that we can begin with today's content. Just a quick uh, housekeeping item before I begin. Just let me know. Type something in that you can hear me okay. Loud and clear, Josh. Okay, excellent. Hopefully everyone else can hear me as well. For today's topic, we are building a document review application. Loud and clear. Welcome back, King Capo. Good to see you. Yeah, I received this request um, not long ago from somebody who wanted to see this capability of how do I create a document and assign people to review that document. So we have a many to many, right? Because multiple people can review a single document and one user can have many documents. So we have a many to many scenario where we can, you know, assign people to review our document and give us a rating and maybe comment on that document. And I'm going to give you a quick demo of this application before we go into Caspio and for me to show you how that was built. Also, if you're new to Caspio or to these live streams, Keep in mind that we don't focus on the aesthetics. Really, we focus on the functionality and the workflow and how the data flows from one data page to another. So if you see these applications and you say to yourself, well, that doesn't really look that really nice, you know, keep that in mind. We don't focus on the aesthetics. Believe me when I say this, I can make these applications look stunning. That is my background front end development. So if I wanted to, I could, you know, create these data pages to look eye appealing uh, to the end user but we really just want to hone in on the functionality and ensure that um, everything flows the way it's supposed to uh, in terms of workflow. Okay, so let me give you a quick demo of this simple application that I put together. So we have, um, at the moment, I'm logged in as John Doe. And as soon as I log in, I'm able to see all of my documents that I've created. If I wanted to create a new document to be reviewed, I would go to new document. And here I can go ahead and create something here. Um, today's Caspio Live, and then I can attach a file and hit submit. And as soon as I do, as soon as I do that, I will be able to see that listed over here under my documents. Now, if I wanted to assign people to review my document, I can go to assign reviewers and using this tabular report, I can add people to review my document. As you can see I've already assigned Sarah Lee and Ken Jones. Um, and then I can go back and see all the reviews that came in from people that have assigned this document to. So if I, let's say, go to this top link for Tennis Guide, I will be able to see the score that I received, the comments, and also review date and who it was reviewed by. Now, I could organize my data and lay out a little bit differently if I wanted to. For example, I could have just a single link. Let's call it Details. And when I click on that link, I can organize my data pages on this web page where I have uh, where I can see the reviews and I can also assign reviewers to that document if I wanted to. So that's something that you could do as well. I didn't do it that way. Sometimes I just kind of go based on how I feel in the moment. And I felt that maybe having two HTML blocks and two different links will look better from the organizational perspective, I guess, on that data page. But let me see if I can go ahead and assign. Let me see. So if I look at directories. I've assigned this one to Ken Jones. Let's assign this one to also Sarah Lee. I'll hit add. And then here on the review, you're going to be able to see all the documents that other people have assigned to you. So you can now review these uh, documents. But I'm going to log out as John Doe. And let's go ahead and log in as um, Sarah, sl at user.com test. Now, Sarah hasn't created any documents, but I know that. John Doe just assigned a document for Sarah to review. So I can go to the review tab and here I can go to directories and I can see, all right, so I need to leave a review here. So I can select my rating. Excellent. Uh, great document. And hit update. What I don't have here is to change the status based on update, which is something that you could do. So let's call these pending, right? Pending reviews. And as soon as I hit update, I could change the status to complete it so that we no longer see that inside this report because I've completed my review. There's really no reason for me to continue to see that document if the status has changed. That's something that I didn't add to my application, but it's something that you can easily add uh, if that's something that you have a need for. 
Okay, so let's see how this application was created. Let me know if you have any questions. At any point, you can feel free to pause me and let me know if there's something else maybe that you feel like it's missing from this application that we could quickly add when we go inside our account. But that's the app. Um, think of it like peer reviews. If I add a document, I want to manually select who should review that document. They submit the review. Maybe we'll get notified via email to let us know, hey, you have a review, log in to, to see that review. Okay, so we have a total of six data pages. We have three tables and we have one view and we also have one authentication. So let's go over our tables. We'll start with the user table. Typical, you know, we have the user ID uh, with the unique ID. I chose random ID for that. Then we have the name of the user, the email and password. These two fields are going to be used as our credentials to log into the app. And then my authentication is simply based off of that table. So if I open up my authentication, you will see that I'm using the user table as the authentication. And I just wanted to create a very quick express login. The second table that we have, which is the documents table. So as a user, when I log in, I can create my own document to be reviewed. So we have the document ID, that's the primary key. We have the user ID because we need to associate the documents back to our user, right? It's a one to many. We need to know which user is creating these documents. And then we have the title, we have the document file, we have date submitted, and we also have the status. I added the field status here. I'm not using it throughout my application, but I just wanted to wanted you to see that you can also change the status of that document from pending to new to completed uh, if that's something that you want to incorporate uh, later on in your application. And finally, the many-to-many -many table between these two tables. So let's take a look. User doc ID becomes my primary key. And I'm using a formula for that, and I'm setting that to unique. So if we look at this formula, you will see that all I'm doing is combining the document ID with the user ID inside this table and turning that into a primary key so that we can avoid duplicates. I'm not going to be able to assign the same user to the same document more than once. So that's why we use the unique field uh, to generate that based on the formula. Right? So for example, if I have, let's say I have a document called basketball and I assign Sarah Lee to that document. I'm not going to be able to assign Sarah Lee again to that document. Okay, so it prevents duplicates. But it also serves as a primary key as well because I flagged that as a unique field. And then we have the document ID and we have the user ID as well because I need to be able to, again, um, choose what document is stamped inside this many-to-many -many table. And I also need to know what user is assigned to that many-to-many -many table so that we know what user is reviewing what document. Then we have the rating field, the comments, and the review date. So I'm just going to show you my relationship here so that you can see. Always helps to see visual schema on how the data is related. Let me move this to the middle so that we can see. Okay, so we have the user table, we have the documents table, and this is my review table. And all we're doing is stamping the doc ID from this table and the user ID from this table. This is going to let us know what user is reviewing what document. Very simple, many to many. And finally, my view. Uh, let's let me explain it from this view. I'm, it might be a little bit easier to see. When the user logs in, we need to be able to see the document information, so the title of the document, the document itself, and I also need to be able to provide my review. So that's why the view is built on top of these two tables, because this table contains the title of the document, the file itself, and you can see we're joining these two tables using the document ID field. And then I have my rating and review date and my comment that I can leave. But when you join these two tables into a view, not only do you see these fields, you can also see these additional fields that belong to that document. So on my website, when I go to review, I can see the title, I can see the file and I can also leave a review. And the reason why I can do that is because I joined these two tables together. So let's take a look at the view. You can see my two tables. 
Uh, this one uses a left outer join because I want to be able to see. Um, how do I explain this a little bit better so you can understand? Um, I want to be able to see from the joining table all the user information and all the document information that's linked to my documents table. And we have the ability to edit one of the two tables. And you can see I chose this table to be able to edit because I want to be able to input my review score, my comment, and also review date. So I should, I should be able to edit information from that join table. That's why I select that down here. And when I click finish and open up this view, you see all the information that's joining these two tables together, except for the missing reviews that we have, that, we, that are still pending. Okay, let me know if that's clear. Hopefully I'm explaining myself correctly. But in the data pages, which we're going to go over next, I will explain how all of these data pages are created. I actually don't need this data page here. Yeah, we can delete this data page because I created a different one to leave a review. So it's a total of five data pages. So let's start with the simple one, new document. So if I click edit and we hit next, it's based off of the documents table. That's very simple, right? So we hit next, next, and all we're doing is creating the title, a document file, date submitted, it's going to be a timestamp. Status, I have the default value of new, and the user ID field is hidden, but based on the authentication, the person that's logged in, we can stamp the user ID into our documents table. And that's how we know which user is creating the document. The second one that's fairly simple is view my documents. So as a user, I should be able to see all the documents that I've created. And that's going to be based off of the documents table as well. Okay. So view my own documents, apply your authentication. Use RLS because we want to be able to see just our own documents that we created. Not going to filter based on any field. And then you include the fields that you need to see. And here are two additional columns that I've created using those two HTML blocks. One is to assign reviewers, okay, which we passed the uh, document ID. I call it did, but you, uh, you pass the document ID to the subsequent page, which is doc underscore details dot HTML. And I have my second column to be able to see the reviews. Once again, we pass the document ID to the next page so that we can see all the reviews that are associated with that document. And here we want to be able to assign all the users to that document. So we have here on the web, we have these two columns. Okay, so let me log, let me actually create a, well, let's log out as Sarah Lee and log in as John Doe, because he already has a um, view of the documents. So that you can see those two hyperlinks. But each time I click on these links, we're gonna pass the document ID. So if I go to assign reviewers, you will see how I pass the document ID. If I go to see reviews, once again, we're passing the document ID. Okay, so here I can just click finish to save. So now let's go over this one here, how we assign reviewers. So we know that we pass the document ID to this data page. So let's take a look at this one. Assign reviewers. Tabular format. And now this one is based off of the, um, the joining table between the documents and the users, okay? The reason why we have to do that is because we need to be able to not only stamp the document ID into that table because we already passed the document ID in the URL, but we also need to select a user from the dropdown and stamp the user ID into that joining table. That's how we get both the document ID and the user ID to be stamped inside this report. So let's see how. We're going to hit next. We're going to filter data uh, based on the document ID. If you recall, we passed the document ID to this page where we see that report. Okay, so we need to be able to filter based on document ID. This is all very common that many of you have seen. Uh, we have the external parameter DID, which I passed from the other page. Value must be required. And now the configuration on the results page. Uh, we're going to have inline insert from the top so that we can assign users into that report. 
we do inline edit as well and inline delete. Why? Because maybe I want to delete this user. I don't want this user to review my document. And maybe I want to reassign the reviewer to that document. So we do inline edit, we do inline delete, and we do inline insert. All three options are enabled. The document ID is going to be a hidden field, but it's receiving the uh, parameter that we passed. You can see on my results page, you don't see that column. It's a hidden field, but it's receiving the document ID. And every time I click add, it's stamping the document ID into that joining table. That's how you get the document ID to be stamped inside that joining table. And this one here, the second one, which is the user ID, we create a dropdown. I did both for source and then the lookup table. You link to your user table, you pull the name, but you stamp the ID into that joining table. Okay. Hopefully that's clear. That's how inside this report, not only do we stamp the document ID, but based on my selection here, we also stamp the user ID. Remember that in my joining table, this is a um, formula data type and I made it unique. So if I tried to go ahead and select Ken one more time to review this document, you can see what happens. Incompatible data in one or more fields. So it's preventing those duplicates because you can't have the same reviewer on the same document more than once. Just a guardrail to prevent you from doing that. Okay, and then let's see what else do we have. Let's display 25, and I think I have my details page disabled because really we don't need to see the details page. I just need to be able to see who is assigned as a reviewer to that document. All right, and then we have see reviews. This is a very simple data page. Let me cancel. So that is view reviews. We're gonna hit edit. Tabular view reviews based on the joining table because that's where the review information is stored. We'll hit next. Uh, no need for RLS because we're passing the document ID. So we are going to be able to see all the reviews that belong to that document ID anyway. It's a unique field. There's my document ID. We're receiving the document ID. Value must be required. And then you have all the fields inside that you want to see in that results page. So we have the rating itself, the comment, review date, and who it was it reviewed by. And I don't have the details page enabled, so when I cancel out of that, you can see we see the rating, the comment, review date, and who was the reviewer that submitted that review for the document. And we have one more to look at, which is how do I now see my own reviews? Uh, not my own reviews, but... Um, documents that I need to review that have been assigned to me by somebody else. Okay, so that's this tab over here. And that data page is assigned to me. And it's based off of that view. So if I edit this data page, tabular format, hit next, assigned to me, you can see I'm pulling the information from within that view where we use the left outer to join the documents table with the joining table. So here you want to um, have RLS because I need to be able to see uh, just the documents that I need to review. So you use the um, user ID from the joining table and the user ID from the authentication table. And then what information do you want to be able to display or see on that results page? So we have, I've also have the inline edit enabled. The reason why I have inline edit enabled, let me log out and log back in as Sarah Lee. So when you're on this tab, you're going to be able to see inline edit. And I should be able to leave a review for that document using inline edit. So let's come back to the data page. All right, so the first thing that we see is submitted by. So on my results page, submitted by. Now I'm seeing the ID. I can actually swap this with the actual name of the user. If I go back to my relationship screen, uh, we have the ability to pull the information or the value from the parent table. Uh, using a very simple setting, we can change that very quickly. Uh, but let's see what else do we see. We see the title of the document. We see the file of the document. And then we have the rating. If you go to editing here, you can see I created a dropdown of custom values. You can also do a lookup table here. 
we have the review comments. It's a text area. I made both of these two fields required. And my review date is simply a timestamp. So when I click inline edit, we see a text area where we can leave comments. And I can also leave a review if I felt that the article or document was excellent, above average, and behind each one of these options, there's a numerical value that's stored in the database. So if I were to leave, let's say, excellent, uh, incredible document, thank you for sharing, hit update, you can see how it stores as a file. And now you can build charts for KPIs and metrics, uh, you can have another user role, maybe an admin level who can see or she can see, um, you know, the types of reviews that documents are generating, um, what is the most uh, highest rated document left by uh, reviewers and things like that if you wanted to. So that is a small little application. I have it set up as a many to many where you can assign many reviewers for a document, but you can also make it more simple if you just want to assign it to a single user without the many-to-many -many capability. Uh, so if, let's say I created a document and I want to have a dropdown here to assign to a single user, that's something you can do. It's a more simple setup, but I wanted to give you something a little bit more complex uh, using a many-to-many. -many. Um, you know, in terms of scalability, you know, if you wanted to expand upon it. But you can definitely remove those capabilities too if you don't have a need for them. If you were to do an, if you were to do a one-to-one -one where it's just one reviewer per document, then when you're creating the document, I would just have a drop down here and select who should review that document. It's as simple as that. But many to many, I think it's more relevant. Uh, for document review because you might have multiple people who are reviewing that document. I don't know. It depends on the use case, right? Um, and uh, the industry. This is just the request that I received from somebody because they had a need for um, multiple reviewers and they had, the, they had the need to assign multiple reviewers to a document. This is exactly what they uh, needed to, to see. Now, one thing that you could also do like this is where a user can create a document and they themselves, let me log in as John Doe because he has a few documents. The user themselves is going to assign reviewers to their own document. However, you could have another role. So if I create a document as John Doe, you might have maybe their supervisor above them who logs in and they're the ones who assign reviewers to that document. That's also something that you could create. But again, this is the need that somebody had, this exact specific need, so that's why I built it that way. If And I always welcome um, suggestions and feedback and things you want to see out of these live streams. So you have my email. If you don't have my email, if somebody is new, let me uh, add my email to the chat window. I do take on requests, so if you would like to see something created in the live stream, send me an email and uh, I'll let you know if it makes sense and if it's worthwhile for the live stream. It can be something as simple as, you know, how do I create a field? You know, because I can incorporate that easily into any application I'm developing. Or it can be something completely unique that you're trying to develop. Just let me know and I will let you know when we're going to have that live session to go over that specific functionality. Uh, let me see, can you add a signature, then it moves. So signature capability is something that has to be customized. It's not out of the box, but I will say without the signature, you could have a text field where you type in your name and then you might have another checkbox or something that says um, approved and then you hit submit. And then it goes in and moves and goes into somebody else's queue. Let's see, TurboTax does it that way. They, they don't even have a signature field in TurboTax. When I file my taxes, they just have me print my name in a simple text field. But I know a lot of people have the need for signature, especially if it's through DocuSign or some kind of third-party integration. But we have 
something in our forum. So forums, forums.caspio.com. And if we go to our JavaScript solutions, and if we go to uh, adding a digital signature to a submission form, this is going to use some JavaScript. It's very easy to implement. You just have to follow the instructions. You're going to be able to do this yourself. I promise you there's very minor customization. It's mostly copy and paste. This is just giving you um, different ways of customizing the signature. Don't be intimidated by if you see all this code. If you just follow the instructions, for example, to display the signature in the details, update data page, insert HTML block. It's just for a different data page type where you have to use a different script in order to have that signature. If you haven't seen this before, this is a, a simple implementation that allows you to add a signature box and then using maybe your finger on a tablet or if you're using a mouse on the computer or PC, you're gonna be able to simulate uh, the signature and then hit submit. However, signature itself and hitting submit is not enough, right? To go to somebody else's queue. There has to be some other trigger that's going to indicate that I need this to go into somebody else's queue. I don't know if the signature is enough. I'm thinking more like a checkbox or even a radio button that, you, that says, okay, I have reviewed this document. And of course you make the signature field required and you check that box, you hit submit. And now the person in the queue next will be able to filter out those documents based on that checkbox because it's been approved by somebody underneath them. I'm hopefully I'm uh, letting you know, Gene, how to, uh, how to set that up. But, Definitely implement some kind of a checkbox method uh, to do that. If you want to send me, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be happy to take this on for a future live stream. If you just send me an email, just let me know, list down exactly what you want to see, and I can create that and showcase it in the future live stream. Happy to do that. Uh, yeah, I can post a URL. So let me, actually, I'm going to post a URL to all of the JavaScript solutions from the forum. So you're going to be able to find a lot of these. They're a plug and play. They're very, very easy to implement. So if you have a need for something dynamic on your forums, you can just pick up one of these and add them to your, to your data pages. The next live is, it's every two weeks. So it's bi-weekly. So the next live stream will be, actually, that's a good question. So yeah, we're still going to have one on the 20th. Uh, we're off all of this week uh, for the holiday and then on the 20th and then the next one will be most likely not on the third because we are off all of this week and also off on New Year's Day. So you're probably looking at the 10th of January. So one on the 20th and one on the 10th. Yep, you bet. All right, so hopefully you found this helpful. You know, how do we go about creating a many to many? Um, and also, you know, assigning multiple reviewers. Believe me when I say this, I wish I had the time because I have other obligations I have to uh, to um, allocate my time for at Caspio. But if I had the time, I would make all of these applications look really, really nice and presentable because I know visual is also important. So I usually try to give you the functionality, but we have done other live stream in the past where I go over the aesthetics and how to modify the look and feel of reports, how to modify the look and feel of forms. Um, we just released this RMA support ticketing system in our app gallery. So if you want to see just how far you can push the applications aesthetics wise, um, take a look at this application. So you can even look at the images if you'd like. We have a navigation menu. We have a nice looking report. We have a rating, we have um, a button that changes color based on the status. And you can demo that whole entire application and see what it looks like. Yeah, King Capo, uh, I know you're a regular attendee, so I, I know for a fact that you've attended previous live streams before. So if you look for, uh, on our YouTube channel, let me just pull this up here separately. Give me a second. Caspio HTML CSS. I've done some front end implementation as well. As, as well. Um, you can see Caspio Live HTML CSS tips and tricks. Caspio Live part three. There's also a part four, part two. There it is down here. So all of these are going to be very helpful um, when 
dealing with the aesthetics and the look and feel in Caspio. Lots and lots of sessions um, that we dedicated to learning how to change the aesthetic. So I definitely recommend that you check out some of these. I don't think I'll be doing one again just because we've already done so many sessions. And this is just four here. There's so many more. If you look for a Caspio um, styling, I believe. Styling your web apps with Caspio. So there's another one here that's 13 minutes. There's so many uh, using styles to customize Caspio data pages. So, so many available. <laughs> you bet. All right, as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you for attending. Um, and we'll see you in uh, two weeks' time. I will have a new session probably available by the end of this week so you can see what the topic is going to be. I'm still trying to decide between two topics. Um, thanks, Gene. Thanks for coming in. Judith, good to see you as well. Roberto, if this was your first time, good to see you. Thanks for your time as well. Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot build a very... I, I, most of you know this already. I don't have the time in these live sessions to build something advanced. It's always just picking small snippets of different types of functionalities that you can build in Caspio. This one, for example, is really just three tables, but it's utilizing a many-to-many, -many, which many people struggle with, um, to create. So hopefully this kind of helps visualize how data pages can be built with a many-to-many -many setup in the back end. Uh, one thing that most people don't realize in that many-to-many -many table is that you could set up a unique field without having a one of these automatically generated IDs, which you can also have. But I'm trying to avoid duplicates, so I create my own custom ID that captures both the user ID and the doc ID, and then we flag that as unique. This prevents you from being able to assign the same user to the same document more than once. But this essentially becomes your unique ID for this table, and you don't really need to automatically generate another one. So it kills two birds with one stone, basically. It prevents duplicates and becomes the primary key. Hey, Roberto, good to know. Good to know. Lots of videos available. Uh, hopefully you don't get tired of listening to me. <laughs> As I do, believe me, because I've had to edit my own videos multiple times. All right, thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate you coming back to these live streams. Uh, without your attendance, we wouldn't have a live stream. I know I always say this, but you don't have to actually listen to the live stream. As long as you show up, put me on mute. You can focus on something else. But your attendance greatly um, um, improves the uh, YouTube's algorithm in getting that exposure and also building out the community for these live streams. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Roberto. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. I'll go ahead and leave the chat running just a few more minutes, and then we'll see you in two weeks' time. Take care. Bye-bye.